things taste better than the summer's first fresh strawberry. Take one bite of a sun-ripened berry and you'll never be satisfied with watery commercial varieties again. Fresh berries are expensive simply because delectable berries are too delicate to travel far and most taste best eaten within hours of picking them. But here's the good news. It's easier than you think to start a home strawberry patch. Lay the groundwork now and you'll harvest pails of ruby red berries for growing seasons to come. Strawberries are a hardy perennial that thrives in growing zones three through 10. However, finding success with strawberries comes down to careful preparation. Most strawberry varieties are split into two categories, June bearing and ever bearing. June bearing plants produce all their fruit over a three to four week period in the early summer. You will get more berries per plant on average and the concentrated ripening time makes it convenient to use the berries for jams and other recipes. Ever bearing strawberries produce a slightly smaller harvest over the entire summer. This makes the fruit ideal for those who want to snack on it fresh all season long though you will need to commit to harvesting fruit every few days. These berries also tend to be smaller and slightly less juicy than June bearing. The plants are typically more compact, which makes them well suited for growing in planters. Many gardeners plant a mix of both types to enjoy the best attributes of each. Plan to harvest approximately one to two quarts of berries for June bearing plant and slightly less for ever bearing. The first year, expect a slim harvest, but it will pick up the second through the fourth summer. Choose the selected area carefully as strawberries are perennials that will thrive in the right garden plot for years to come. These plants require full sun and well-drained rich soil with a pH between 5.5 and 7.5. They do not compete well with weeds. Raised beds for strawberries have a lot of appeal as well. Not only do they allow you to control the soil quality better, but the strawberries stay contained so the runners don't spread into other beds. We are using a simple single layer of cinder blocks for the strawberry patch raised bed. I have planted strawberry plants in bare root strawberries. It is best to keep the bare root strawberries cool until you plant them, if you decide to go that route. For the best planting success with them, soak the bare roots in a bucket of water for at least 20 minutes. Each strawberry root bundle includes a crown, which is the growing point at the plant where the roots attach to the main stem. Flowers and foliage grow from this spot, so it's critical you plant it directly on the soil line. Covering the crown in soil may cause the whole plant to rot, while putting it too high above the ground may cause it to dry out. Water the plants immediately after planting and carefully monitor the soil moisture for the next few weeks. Give them about one inch of water per week though it is best to water whenever the soil seems dry, as strawberries' shallow roots make them extra sensitive to drought conditions. Make sure to provide the strawberries with nitrogen. Nitrogen can be purchased and mixed with water. However, I prefer to go the natural route. I make compost tea and pour it over the strawberries. I simply save any kitchen scraps in a container with a lid and keep it in the refrigerator. It might be onion peels or wilted greens or potato peels. I fill the container half with water and add the scraps. When it is full, I strain the liquid and pour over the strawberries. This is great nitrogen. Mulching around the plants when the berries form will help keep berries off the ground which keeps them safer from slugs and from rot. Within a few weeks, the strawberry crowns should start to send out leaves and flowers. 
When you begin seeing flowers, you should pluck off these first flowers before they form fruit. This sacrifice will be worth it in the long run, as you are convincing the plant to put all of its energy into root production this season, so that you will get a healthier plant with even more fruit production next year. By the second year of growth, you can plan to harvest berries off your plants. You can pick the berries as soon as they turn bright red. It's best to harvest them in the morning before the temperature heats up and refrigerate them immediately. They will last longer if you'll store them dry and only wash the fruit immediately before eating. Unfortunately, birds like to bite into a fresh strawberry the second it is fully ripened. To counteract this, I painted small rocks to look like strawberries. That way they will peck the rocks and eventually they will begin looking elsewhere to find a sweet treat. At the end of each fruiting season, cut back the plants vigorously. This helps support a stronger root system and encourages new growth and more blooms for next summer. Don't be timid, you can cut the plants back to soil height without a problem. As the weather starts to cool in early fall, you can top dress your established plants with a rich compost mix. Cover them with six inches of fresh hay, shredded leaves, or pine needles to act as an insulation over the winter. Keep this protective layer in place until early spring when the weather starts to break. When given a good start, strawberry plants will produce fruit for four to five years. During that second year, take the runners from the current strawberries and put them into a second strawberry patch. This will help you get another bed established so that by year four or five, you have another bed ready to go when the original strawberries begin to die back. It takes time and effort to start a home strawberry patch, but the results speak for themselves. Invest your energy in the prolific perennial berry and you'll be reaping your reward for years to come. Remember, it's not about if, it's about when. SHTF Survival Homestead Teaching Farm thanks you for watching this video. Please continue to help us help you by liking, sharing, and subscribing.